Division II will welcome a brand new football team this fall in the Anderson Trojans of the South Atlantic Conference. Anderson announced their intentions to start the program back in 2019 and signed their first recruiting class in 2023. This is the story of the start of the Anderson football program. This is the newest team in Division II. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college and spring league football content like this, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know what college football program you are most excited to watch over the next few seasons in the comment section below. Anderson University was founded in 1848 as Johnson Female Seminary and had around 600 students attending the school as of 1857. The school closed its doors in 1962 after William Bullen Johnson, the chancellor of the school, died and the start of the Civil War occurred. In 1911, the school reopened its doors under the name Anderson College after Robert Anderson, an American Revolutionary War veteran, and the namesake of the town Anderson University is in, Anderson, South Carolina, where the school is located. In 1931, Anderson College became a co-educational junior college. In the 1990s, Anderson returned its status and offering as a four-year institution. In 2006, the school would be named Anderson University. The school would start competing in athletics as a member of the Division II Conference Carolinas in 1998, would join the South Atlantic Conference in 2010. The South Atlantic Conference was founded in 1975 as a football-only conference with the founding members consisting of Carson Newman, Cataba College, Elon, Gardner-Webb, Lenore Ryan, Morris Hill, Newberry College, and Presbyterian. The conference would become a full-fledged sports conference in 1989. When Anderson begins playing football as a member of the Division II Conference officially, they will become the 13th school in the SAC playing football. With a student base of 3,237 students, Anderson decided they wanted to start a football program. In October of 2019, they announced that they were going to start a football program after years of discussion. The interest was always there for the school, and they already had a conference to play in with the SAC, but the timing never felt right. When they decided to make the decision, athletic director Dr. Burt Epting Jr. would say, We have strong enrollment, great facilities, great faculty, and great resources. And when you put that all together, you have an opportunity to really impact the university, and we felt like this time was now. They announced they would begin playing in 2024 and start having athletes report in 2023. The reason for this was to give the university time to prepare adequately in all phases for the new major endeavor. Epting explained, you have to make sure you have all the correct housing opportunities, enough space in the dining commons, make sure our students' affairs development professionals can handle the number of students we're bringing in. They plan to start getting the word out to high school athletes about the new program, coming to town as well. The school did extensive research talking with other schools within the conference to make sure they could set up the best roadmap for the program with no delays. They also wanted to make sure that they could find the right coach. They hadn't started the search as of the announcement of the school's football program would start once the funding was in place with the hopes of naming a head coach in 2021. The university planned to put six to seven million dollars into funding scholarships and other necessary equipment for football. Epting explained everything you need from personnel, equipment, and partially from a facilities perspective. When you think of football centric, that six million dollars will allow us to make sure we have the needed number of faculty to offset the increase in student population. We'll also allow us to have the administrative staff that we need in athletics. Our sports information department will have to grow. Our strength conditioning staff, our academic administration, our athletic administration, and student services will have an increase as well. That number will allow our university to handle the change. They also had the plan to build their own stadium on campus. They thought they could expand the field with a soccer team, and future lacrosse teams were going to be playing, with the turf providing a way to use it in multiple ways. With growth comes opportunity, and the possibility that the football program will provide an economic boost to Anderson. The administration is excited about the chance to further entrench themselves within the community, and is hopeful the community will embrace the future Trojans. It provides more jobs in the area, meaning there are going to be more people buying and renting houses in the area, paying taxes, and spending money in the community. The man chosen to be the school's first head coach, Bobby Lamb. Bobby Lamb played quarterback at Furman University, where he was a two-year starter. While he was at Furman, he helped them beat South Carolina, Georgia Tech, NC State, and led them to the conference title in 1985. The Paladins suffered a two-point loss to Georgia Southern in the 1985 
NCAA Division I AA football championship game, with Lamb throwing for one touchdown and rushing for another. After his successful collegiate playing career, Bobby became an assistant serving in multiple roles for 15 years for his alma mater. He helped them win the 1988 Division I AA National Championship while serving as a defensive end coach and would later become the quarterback coach. In 2002, Lamb was hired as Furman's head coach, where he would lead them to four Division I AA playoffs, including a semifinal appearance and quarterfinal appearance, a conference title in eight winning seasons in nine years. Though his lone losing season would come in 2010, when the team would go 5-6. and six. After missing the FCS playoffs for four years, Lamb decided to resign as head coach, finishing with the 67-40 and 40 record. A few months later, he was named the head coach at Mercer, who was relaunching their football program after a 70-year absence. As a member of the Pioneer League, Mercer would go 10-2, setting a record for most wins by a first-year program in NCAA history. They would join the Southland Conference in 2014 and played around 500 ball and would proceed to experience four losing seasons in Lamb's last four seasons, leading to him being fired. He finished with a record of 41-39 and in seven seasons at Mercer. Lamb would spend the 2020 season as an assistant head coach to Billy Napier at Louisiana, but after that season, Bobby and his wife Allison decided to move back to upstate South Carolina, take care of his wife's sick father, who unfortunately later passed away. When Epting found out Lamb was back in the area, he invited him to Anderson's campus. Lamb's wife thought he was crazy for wanting to build another program from scratch. He originally had reservations at first, but when he visited the campus, he was blown away. Lamb, now 60, accepted a job in July of 2021. He had other opportunities to continue in off-field support roles for younger coaches, such as Napier, who he coached at Furman. But he wasn't ready to pass up the thrill of being on the sidelines. Plus, by coaching at Anderson, he'd be 37 miles away from his mother-in-law and 61 miles away from his 83- and 87-year-old parents in Commerce, Georgia. When Lamb first got to Anderson, he spent the first six months as the only coach on staff. He brought in Seth Strickland from Albany State as offense coordinator and Malik Chevry as the defensive back coach. Lamb explained these hires telling The Athletic, the secret there was I hired two guys that were coaching at the Division II level. I wanted one offensive guy, one defensive guy, and basically me. Those two guys started the recruiting process. Compared to the FBS, which offers 85 total scholarships, and FCS, which offers 63 total scholarships, Division II only offers 36 scholarships that can be broken up among multiple players. Anderson's players can stack their football money with any academic or financial aid and outside scholarships they receive in order to keep their costs as low as possible. So having two Division II coaches who know how to work around the formula made a former Division I AA coach's life a whole lot easier. The Trojans chose to use 11 scholarships for the 2023 class to save future scholarships for later classes. They focused on South Carolina athletes, while also focusing a little bit on Georgia and North Carolina as well, who might have been right on the fringe from programs such as Wofford, Furman, South Carolina State, and the Citadel. Their first ever commit would be Joshua Peacock who was a 6'2", 230-pound defensive end from Grovetown, Georgia. At first, Peacock had never heard of Anderson. When the coaches invited him to a camp, he became intrigued to play for a startup program. As a Division II prospect, Peacock was concerned that he might be left without a scholarship offer in time when the transfer portal put a squeeze on high school recruiting. So he made the two-hour trip to South Carolina to get a good look at Anderson. Peacock liked Coach Lamb's vision, and how everything he wanted to get done was getting done. He became the program's first commit in program history that August, and during the 2023 signing day, Anderson signed its first 56 football players in school history. Of those 56, 40 were from South Carolina, while 13 came from Georgia, 2 came from North Carolina, while 1 came from Maryland. They planned to open up August camp last year with 90 players on the roster who would all redshirt for the 2023 season. Some of those players had Division I offers, but liked the idea of playing for Bobby Lamb. Lamb spoke on the progress, saying, It's been overwhelmingly rewarding already. It will be really rewarding once we play. Brett Hickman will serve as the team's defensive coordinator, being the third hired by Lamb. They have finished building a new field house and upgrading Trojan Stadium to host 4,000 fans on game day. They will open up their season against St. Andrews at home on September 7th. What do you think? Can Anderson find early success? Let me know in the comment section below. 
you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos. YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.